Content warning. The first half of this episode deals in themes of child trauma. This includes the implications of abuse, themes relating to child labor, and themes of religious trauma. This conversation takes place from the beginning to the break. Stay safe. Last time on the Strings of Fate podcast. I don't mean to be rude, but do you have like a, like a sibling? Yeah, I do. If we get out of this, I'll, I'll uh, see what I can remember and get back to you on it. That would be amazing. Thank you. I've, I've been looking for her for a while. I've taught you about as much as I can in this time frame. These powers, I don't want you to look at them as something you can use to win a fight. I kind of see it as magic that helps grow. It seems like it brings life rather than takes it away, which is... Something that I'll have to get used to, but I don't know what I'm going to (laughs) do. I don't know how I'm going to train if I don't have your help. You're going to need somebody who can help you find what you're looking for. I've been avoiding talking about it. I'm sure you've noticed. That's for my own reasons. But I know that there's something that's important to you in my experience. And I know you want to find her. And I want to help you. So, what do you want to know? You come upon what looks to be a small corner store. And at the top, you see the sign. Blondie's Botany. We see a forest clearing, the undergrowth wild and untamed, morning sunlight just beginning to pour down, a break from thick canopies of green. Around you, Ladara, the fresh smell of the forest itself, of wildflowers and dew of the early morning. In the distance, the roar of a waterfall, dulled to ambiance. Astrid, as you sat down upon the aged corpse of a fallen tree, now home to fungi and moss and whatever feeds upon them, and she directs at you a very open question. One with a lot of weight that has been building every day of training and every day since you've known Astrid. What do you want to know? What do I want to know? Gosh, I don't even know where to start. When did you meet my sister? I think it must have been ten years ago at this point. It's weird to think that that much time has passed, but... Yeah. Wow, that's a long time. Yeah, um... It feels still fresh, I guess, when you bring it all up, but... uh, She was just a kid. Probably, I don't know. Seven, eight. And I was a 
shitty teen at the time. Still young, but... <sighs> Put through a lot of shit for my age. But I guess I don't have to talk to you about that. Yeah, I get that. <laughs> so, you know where she is right now? I have a hunch on where she is right now. Based on... What I learned about her in the time that I knew her. It was... It wasn't long. A year. Probably. But... I don't want to bore you with a story. And I don't... I don't... Because I don't even know if this is the same person we're talking about. It's just a... Like I said before... A hunch. But... If it'll help you... And... Eventually, if it may help her... I'll tell you whatever you want to know. If you'd like, I can just start from the beginning. And sure. Well, you can stop me whenever you have a question... Okay. Something along those lines, but I'll just give you a little bit of background. I... I don't know where I'm from originally. I don't really know my parents. I was really, really little. I have vague flashes here and there, but that image of them is gone. The first home that I really remember was... A bunk in a factory in the principalities. Paid a fair wage, reduced by a sizable amount, doing the work of people twice as grown. So when the Onsirian church came in... Derogatory. Saying that they were rescuing those that were unfit to work such a young age I mean me and the other kids were jumping for joy no more scary machines no more mines we just didn't know what it meant it meant a new home a new family far north into the painted valley a wagon train of scared children on roads feared by knights. It's horrible. And by the end, not everyone had made it. But there was one thing that kept me and the other kids okay. Just a sliver of light. A little girl. Younger than Nearly everyone else there. She must have also been from some of the same conditions that we were. I don't know how familiar you are with... The system in Varen. I don't know that I know much about it. It's messed up. It's corrupt. And there's no limitations on any mining operation, factory, town, or, you know, business there. And so, you have a lot of kids like me and like her that are kind of pushed to work for a wage at an extremely, extremely young age. She never really told me her story, but... She always had something to say. And no matter how scary it got, no matter how many horrid noises came from the forest, she never let it get to her. In fact, she was the one comforting people much bigger than her. She genuinely just wasn't faced. I didn't know why. No one else did. But she stood out. She kind of looks at you. 
as she's explaining this. She's got like a somber smile on her face. She's recalling the memory. Ladar has tears in her eyes, just <laughs> just hearing the way that she speaks about her. Oh my gosh, I have tears in my eyes. <laughs> Ew. <laughs> Our destination was an orphanage. Or a seminary. I'm not really sure the, the difference, honestly. A boarding school, you know. It was on the coast of the Sapphire Strait of the Painted Valley. A mining town shared through a variety of complex edicts between Varen and Ansir. And life there was no better than the factory nor the forest. The people in charge, nuns, clergy, people, they were cruel. They let us know as soon as we got there that we were there to be saved, too. To make up for our sinful pasts, our sinful selves. And their lessons were a reflection of that. It was a disparaging of everyone and what made us who we are, that we were inherently sinful, that ran in our blood. And if you had any casting in you, that made it worse, much worse. I was particularly singled out because I had a bad mouth and a worse temper. But if we're talking about the same person, She had it rough too. Was she was she taking the did, did, was she taking the medicine that she looks up there's finally a moment of connection and a very heavy realization that she is talking about the same person as Astrid. <laughs> So there was Madison. Oh my god. She talked about it all the time. She talked about how she needed it and that that's why oh this was happening and that she didn't she wasn't trying to she wasn't trying to do what she was doing. It just happened to her. I'm sorry. I'm Oh my god. No, I'm sorry. I did it's... this to her. No, I did this to her. No, it... Listen, we can stop if you want. I, uh, I can just tell you the name of where to go and we don't no, have to no, talk. No, no, no. I'm okay. It's just a lot, but... Was she okay? Surprisingly, I don't know if she was okay, but she never cried. And the other kids, I mean, we, in a way, we all kind of saw her as family. So anytime anything would happen, I mean, there was always someone there to pick her back up and to try and take her mind off of it. That was our life for that year. It was just surviving together. Thank you. Thank you for doing that. I just, there was nothing else that any of us would have done. But yeah, she... The other kids thought she was the toughest because she just, no matter what, she wouldn't cry. She wouldn't let negativity get to her. She'd pick herself up. She'd smile. 
that really meant a lot to the others. She didn't know that, but it did. But I knew that she wasn't tough like that. She did want to cry. She was a kid who wouldn't. She was just keeping a brave face. She used to cry all the time and I used to have to make her stop. We would be in hiding. She'd be so scared, but I always have to tell her that if you're loud, they'll find us. So just hold it in and be brave. Be brave. Huh. I don't think she knew just how much seeing a young girl smiling in such a horrible place, there was something. That smile to everyone was clouds parting. We were wilting sunflowers and she was the sun. And in my last few months, I just, I asked her after a particularly bad run-in with one of the headmistresses why she wouldn't cry, why she kept smiling. She told me the same thing that you just said. She said that she smiles because she knows that she's going to be going home any day. She was just waiting. I, I didn't end up waiting. I, I had had enough and I did something that apparently nobody had succeeded in doing before. I ran. I ran, and I never looked back, dodging the knights, the clergymen, the nuns. I offered the escape to everyone before I did it. They were too scared. Except for her. She was staying put for a reason. Years later, that smile still burned into my mind. I don't know where she is now exactly, but my hunch is that she's still back there after all these years. Just waiting for someone. I hear that mining town's grown a lot larger years since I've been gone doing all she kind of gesticulates wildly around with her <laughs> arms this brookshade it's a major hub for on Syrian religion and Farin territory now and like I said I'm running on a hunch, but she was determined to wait. And so I think she's, her words kind of falter as she just kind of sinks into her hands. Falling silent. I'm going to find her. I have to. I did that to her. I put her in that situation. 
they look up to you and kind of take a breath before continuing. Vidara, if the person that I'm talking about is the same person you're thinking of, then I think it has to be you. I don't think she'll go with anyone else. Thank you so much for telling me all of this. It's nice to know that she was taken care of even when I couldn't be there. Don't thank me yet. Now you get to carry that weight too. <laughs> but um, I think the difference here is that you're brave enough to do something with it. I've been looking for so long and to happen to run into you who knew her. It's incredible and that will be on my to-do list. It's my next stop. Unfortunately, I I still have to help my friends. I know. Yeah, and I'm I understand that, and, um, like I said, this isn't, this information is yours to do what you wish with it, so, I just am happy that there's someone else that knew her too. Just, when you see her, tell her that Astrid's sorry for leaving her behind. I will tell her you said hello. <laughs> Fair enough, she says <laughs> as she stands up, stretches from along and says, we still got a few more days. Training has not stopped yet. Oh, yes, the training. Yes, Couldn't the forget training. that. <laughs> if you're going to stand up to the Knights of the Morning Lord, you're going to need to uh, have a little more magic under your belt and a little better connection to the Vondrick side of things. And I'm absolutely ready for that. I will do anything it takes at this point. Good. That's exactly what you're going to need, she says as she sort of marches off back to the waterfall. No, not the fucking waterfall. <laughs> and <laughs> as you kind of reminisce, these thoughts entering your head as you allow yourself to come to terms with what you may find here. You feel a firm grip on your shoulder as Alana kind of leans forward. The forest sounds being traded for the early waking hours of Lunastra. Alana leans forward and says, You ready? <sighs> yeah, yeah. I think I'm ready. You make your way into Bondi's botany. And that's where we'll take a quick break. Hey there, it's Christian with the break. Thank you so much to Michaela and Michelle for filling in for me last week. I had strep and absolutely zero voice, so they came out of nowhere on the latest of notices and helped me out. I hope you're enjoying episode 40 of the podcast. That's right, episode 40. It's a big milestone for us, and we are really, really excited to have made it this far. 
And what better way to celebrate any big milestone than with a big giveaway? That's right. We are partnering with our friends over at Dungeon Depths once again to host another fantastic giveaway. You can check out our social media and their social media for the specifics of this giveaway. There is a lot being given away here. A total of 21 stickers and two sticker sheets. That's right. We are giving away an assortment of softpod themed stickers, including... Your choice of five logo stickers, a special winter logo sticker, both party sticker packs, a choice of logo decal, a set of Moonlighters decals, two sheets of Dungeon Depths TTRPG miscellaneous stickers, and your choice of a Dungeon Depths Roll the Bones sticker pack. That is a lot of stickers that you can put on a lot of things. So go check out our social media for details. Thank you, Dungeon Depths. If you're not familiar with Dungeon Depths, well, they are a store that supplies quality gaming supplies with character, and I said supplies twice to emphasize it. You can delve into the Dungeon Depths to find stickers, clothes, dice, dice vaults, apparel, which also means clothes. And if you use the code SOFTPOD at checkout, you can get 10% off your order. That's right, S-O-F-P-O-D. In all seriousness, Olivia from Dungeon Depths has been fantastic this year. As the year comes to a close, I just want to shout out and say thank you for everything that you have done for us, whether that be the giveaways or that just be talking about the show and supporting us. It has all been huge, and everything that you have created uh, for the show has been absolutely amazing. So thank you so much, Olivia. Everyone give a shout out to Dungeon Depths and go check them out, please. Oh, and I just got this message in that the winter stickers, which are a limited time availability only, that pre-order is going to end tonight at 11.59 p.m. EST, so Friday, 11.59 p.m. EST. Moving on, thank you to Roll20 for sponsoring the show. Roll20 is a virtual tabletop that allows you to connect with players across the world, or if you're like me last night, then it means that you uh, you played Lancer and you played it on TV and you had Roll20 there as a battle map, which is really nice. So thank you, Roll20. This show is also sponsored by you, the viewer, via Patreon. Uh, Patreon is this amazing website in which you help support us and it keeps us on the air because it allows us to pay for our licenses and for the distribution platform for our podcast. And so... Uh, Thank you very much to everyone who supports us on Patreon. It is a huge help always. Um, We are always trying to figure out what the best way to get content out to you is. And with work and such winding down, hopefully we can have some things out soon for you. I'd like to list a couple names from our honorary bard tier, if you would all be so kind as to listen, hark, listen. We have patrons to discuss. Thank you to Anna, Faye, Jessica, Isela, Carrie, Annie, and Eli. Thank you so much. If you haven't already heard, we are heading to Holiday Matsuri. That's right. We actually have a panel at a con. It's pretty huge. If you are attending, you can do so on Saturday at 12.45 p.m. in the Los Angeles panel room. You can join us there for our panel on storytelling and RPGs, in which we call So You Want to Be a Storyteller. We'll be going over character. We'll be going over being a DM and writing out a narrative that engages your players. It's all going to be super fun. So come check it out, please. Finally... Thank you to our community Discord server, the Soft Chord. Thank you for supporting us and for being there every Friday. It really means a lot, and we would not have made it through this year without y'all. And of course, you can't mention the Soft Chord without the Soft Chord mods. Thank you for making the community amazing and for keeping it all under wraps because none of us have time to, so you are really a godsend. I think that's everything I've got to say for today, so thank you for an amazing year. Let's have another. Goodbye. You push into a unlit, sort of cramped, more cramped than you were expecting space. 
just what you can see from here, you can see that there are jars upon jars on shelves filled with seemingly random things. Teeth as large and sharp as daggers, the shell of a creature you can't even imagine, and something that seems to be moving. Just a few of the strange things that you witness in here. There are rows and rows of flowers, as many as there can be, that are cramped in such a small space, just as beautiful as the ones on the outside, but with curtains pulled closed. In this dark space there, they're almost looming, almost growing as you step past them. The smell in here is sweet but strange, like a concoction of some kind. Alana and you are sort of walking inside. Both in this sort of heavy silence that takes up inside. Doesn't seem to be anyone in here from what you can tell. Um, but you can make a perception check if you'd like. Okay. 20. 20? Yeah. In the pitch silence, there is movement in here. Something that, as you are walking through one of these rows, kind of catches you off guard. Is there something sort of shifting in the darkness around you? You can still see, but with all the foliage and the kind of mishmash of different oddities and crates and barrels and kind of on guard. I grab Anna's arm and I stop and I'm like, <clears throat> Hello, is there anyone here? <laughs> you just hear this sort of <laughs> sound around in the darkness and you feel something kind of step up behind you a towering figure what do you do I slowly turn around you and Alana both turn and in the darkness you see a looming, enormous figure whose head almost reaches the ceiling of this cramped space. Wide set shoulders, a scar running over the eye, and the head of what looks to be a hyena. From top of the head to toe, just covered in gray fur with black spots, the mouth wide in this wild smile full of sharp teeth, wearing a green apron over a button-down shirt okay. tucked into brown <laughs> pants. Some khakis? Like, oh, um, uh, hi. Hmm? You hear from the back, someone shot. Chewie, are you scaring the customers again? <laughs> Damn it. As you hear this cane begin to make its way across the back floor, and you hear, you see the head of the figure just kind of shoot up and go, <laughs> uh, kind of picks up a bouquet from one of the pots and just kind of like oh. holds it towards you. Ladar is too stunned to speak. <laughs> <laughs> Alana She's is like, also too stunned uh, to speak. Um, he has his hand on his quarter staff and is kind of getting ready to hit and now is very confused. She reaches out her hands, I guess. And she's like <laughs> He yeah, kind of puts the oh, he puts the huge bouquet in your hands as he's just like <laughs> oh, uh, thank thank you. Hobbling from kind of the back you can hear this cane movement as you hear oh, where are the bloody lights as as the light just <laughs> shoot up 
And you can see that, yes, in front of you, there is what looks to be a seven foot tall hyena oh, okay. man. That's exactly that is just what standing I it was. there. Okay. The clothes are a little too small. Uh, the, the legs just point out. There's no shoes on, so it's just like paws uh-uh. there. Who's just sort of wildly smiling with these wide eyes, or wide eye, because he's got one, one scarred over. Um, and he's like, <gasps> coming out of the back room, you see kind of making her way slowly from between these rows and rows, the foliage much taller than her, all these different beautiful plants. Now with the lights on, they're gorgeous. They're overgrown. There's a lot of them, but they're gorgeous. You see an older dwarven woman with sort of darker skin. The years are set into her face with graying dark hair that goes down to the back of her knees tied into these thick braids, uh, wearing this multicolored shawl as she kind of leans on a cane. It says, Oh, yeah, you know, usually we're not that open that early. I'm so sorry for my associate. Let me get over there towards oh, I'm you. I'm so sorry. I didn't, I didn't realize we had to... customers. No, I'm so sorry. I didn't mean to intrude. Ah, it's no intrusion. Joey, get over here. What are you doing? No, you're not supposed to greet. Come here. Come here. And Joey's going, mm. and then kind of like the little, little hunch to his back. He's kind of got to keep his head low, kind of makes his way around. You see that when he moves, he kind of begins to move on all fours where he gets like below the foliage. <laughs> it's like, no, nope, what did I tell you about? No, nope, two feet, two feet. Like, <laughs> oh, he's all right. He's okay. He's very sweet. I, I know, but I, <sighs> he wants to be a part of the shop. He's got to work to be a, someone that's presentable to the... Okay, I'm getting ahead of myself. Uh, so we are customers then. What, what, what are you trying to find flowers for at... Oh. Uh, Almost eight o'clock. The morning bell ain't even rung yet. I'm actually not looking for flowers. Um, oh, you're not then? Were you in the wrong fucking place? I, oh, excuse my language. <laughs> you're in the wrong fucking place. <laughs> oh, no. Um, I was told to come here by my friend, Astrid. You see her head kind of cocked to the side as she's just like I I see and for what purpose she told me to train under the person that trained them is that right then she kind of backs up and says well ah uh, Sorry to say that uh, I think that person is uh, Well it looks like they're retired from that Sort of thing So you know maybe I'll get back to them And say that you were uh, You know Looking but uh, they come back a different day they, they, They're not in Are they? I think I know who's in my shop, Missy. She says, she's like so much shorter than you. <laughs> she's like, <laughs> staring. Make intimidation check, sure. <laughs> Lenora's like, I don't believe you. Oof. That's not very intimidating. That's a nine. <laughs> she's so much shorter than you, but her stare is iron. Looking at you, she's kind of leaning on her cane. She says, Right, and why don't you tell me what you're thinking then, if uh, you seem to be a bit distrustful of my words. I don't mean to be accusatory, but I am in desperate need of help, and if there is someone here that can help me, I would really appreciate it. (sighs) And what, pray tell... Do you need help with? Because I can help you with flowers. That's easy for me. That's what I do. Flowers. Are you sure? They're quite pretty. I need to make flowers, and I make a rose. (sighs) Bloody hell! She kind of backs up and says, "Joey, go make us some tea." (laughs) She looks at you and says, "Don't stand around. Come on." Thank you. I'm like, I want to come on. (laughs) She makes her way back. Um, Joey kind of gives a little salute and then just silently 
makes his way off following where you all are going, basically, um, making her way all the way to this little back room. It's even more cramped than the front, but it looks to be like a little living space. You can see that there's like a two very small beds that are like away from each other. Um, there's like a shared little kitchen space, like a small, like, like, like almost closet sized bathroom, um, as well as more and more of these beautiful plants and decorations and bits and bobs that are all strange hanging in this area. You kind of have to duck under like hanging jars full of strange ingredients and things like that. Um, in the center, there's like a little tea table there. Um, Joey makes his way over to this little like corner kitchen unit thing that they have and kind of sets fire to a little wood stove as he puts a kettle on as he's like <laughs> oh I, I don't mind him he he doesn't talk but he's very somehow he's still very noisy it's all right yeah <sighs> he never said that raising kids would be easy she says as she sits down at the tea table and says and I've raised a lot of them um, sitting uh, on top of these little cushions. Well, oh, oh. don't just stand there. Take a seat. Oh, thank you. So, um, he's yours. He's your child. You take care of him. Yeah, yeah. I, I take care of him. Of course, I didn't, I didn't create the creature, but I, I care for him because no one else is looking out for him. He's such a handful and he <laughs> eats far too much, but... I love him. That's sweet. That's <sighs> very sweet. He was a little pup. You can do get like a check to see if you know what Joey is. What is Joey? It's like an arcana or a nature check or a history check. Nature or like a history or Minister like a... Or an arcana or all those or things. Or like a... 18. You've seen a couple people like Joey. It may, may be more in your time in Sinyath. With the Xanathar Guild, um, Joey's what's called a knoll. Uh, this sort of um, this this heritage of people that are are kind of more. Um, that's what I'm looking for. Their heritage is more like closer to like uh, hyenas and dogs and things like that. There are some you know animal folk that reside in Afra. They're just not super common in some places, but cities. Usually you'll you'll find a couple here and there. Um <sighs> All right, and you can call me Cranny. Sorry. Cranny. Oh cra yeah, grandmother. Cranny. Oh granny. Alright. Yeah, like grandmother. grandmother. Everyone gotcha. calls me Cranny. So you can call me Granny, it's just easier that way. Okay. Um Granny, so I as I said, I was told to come here by Astrid. I'm assuming you Yes, know I know. Astrid. Massive pain in my ass. Another little child has gone and run off to do adventures. Uh, yeah. But uh, I love her. She just never visits and then she sends more people my way to learn about being a druid and all that stuff. I've been done that nearly what? Years now. So Astrid sends people a lot. Well, you're the first, I guess. So I expected maybe, I don't know, a letter before sending uh, somebody to just, you know, come oh, in and join my school of druidic magic. Oh, but realize. okay. I'm so sorry. I didn't realize it, that they didn't say anything. Ah, <sighs> it's fine. I wouldn't expect it from them anyways. And you... And she kind of points over at Alana, who is just like, Me. What are you doing here? Uh, oh, he, he's just with me. Yeah, moral support. Yeah. Moral support. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All right. How do you take your tea? However you take it. Oh, it's fine. All right. No fixings then, Joey. Um, Joey kind of turns around like mm -hmm, and just kind of like nodding his head <laughs> with this wild smile on as he fixes the tea and I want to kind of sits there steers a little bit he's like I can't help but feel like uh, so are you going to train her or are you 
is this like a big lead up to not training her and I haven't decided yet you see because you can make pretty flowers from nowhere that's like the basic you know that there is a connection to magic there but what else can you do all right do you want me to show you now as long as you don't destroy anything sure okay I'll try my best control is half of the lesson all right if you say so and I'll just look at Joey and I'll say how old are you Joey and I'll cast speak with animals Joey kind of hears this and then sort of cocks his head and turns towards you and it's just kind of like and then kind of counts out his fingers a little bit he holds them up a bunch of times until he's got like um he, he's at the time he's got like 24 or something on there um and from the side as you're looking at Joey you hear a much smaller voice going but that's not that impressive as you turn and look over and on Granny's shoulder there's like a small mouse <laughs> there that's just kind of got its arms folded it's like excuse me uh, I thought that's what you were trying to do. I was going to stop you and say that Joey doesn't speak anything, oh. just in general. But you can understand Chester here. Yeah. Yeah, I Chester think has a lot can. to say, apparently. I do got a lot to say, actually. <laughs> Thanks for asking. Uh, Chester, uh, if, you, if you don't mind, it's like, no, 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 I know. I, I don't have to talk a lot, you know? You keep me over here in the back. We can only talk when you're not working the shop. Hey, Finally, someone with a little bit of uh, a little bit of manners around here. Chester, how is it? How is how's you doing? Uh, uh, Ladara, nice to meet you, Chester. Tiny mouse Tiny hand. Tiny mouse paw. Shakes your finger. <laughs> he says, "Listen, you need information. Me and my boys, we got you. Little manners goes a long way in this city. Let me tell you." Mouse wink. Wink. Oh, wow. You, you know, honestly, I might I might hold you to that. I trust you guys. I, you guys see everything. We're the most trustworthy there is in this city. There ain't no friend better to have in a city like Lunastra than a little mouse guy like me. <laughs> I want him. Uh, Chester. Uh, <laughs> so is that not impressive enough, apparently, Chester? You know what? At first I was saying it wasn't impressive, but, you know, not only can you speak to animals, you can speak to animals and really make them sympathetic to your cause. <laughs> and, you know, <laughs> Granny, he, he kind of looks up at, at Granny, who's like, <laughs> oh, God. Uh, it's like, Granny, I'm starting to feel, uh, I'm starting to feel like it is impressive. I mean, come on. She came all the way here in the early part oh. of, well, you know, I guess you can't really tell. But, you know, before the big bells rung, so it's got to count for something, right? Thanks, Justin. I, uh, you can speak to animals. You can make plants appear. I... Is there something you want me to do? I can I can try something else if you... Okay, sort of leans back. And you see her head kind of break up a bit. As if she's either smelt something or heard something off. She quickly stands up and then makes her way out towards the front. What do you do? Uh, what? Chester, do you know what she's doing? Ah, shit. Listen, this business is kind of rough. You, you may want to stay out of this one. Stay out of it? What is it? Is it bad? It's some folks that have been coming around the shop recently. I, I, I don't know. All right, and I get up. And this card stands up as well. I want to be prepared to, I don't know, fight, I guess. We'll see what's going on. Hey, if you're going out there, do you mind if I, you know, hop along? Come on, get on. Oh, sweet. Hey, I'm going to take this. Uh, and he kind of, he probably scurries up the side of <laughs> Auna's staff and then just sits on the tip of it. And I was like, he, he can't understand this. So he's just like... <laughs> 
it, it's fine. He's just going to sit there. Chester, what? just for my sanity, Chester, just don't just try not to talk too much because it'll look really strange to anyone else. No problem, boss. I got it. Nice. Yeah, he he kind of looks and says, Chester, nice to meet you. And extends his hand. But to Alan all, he's just. Weep, 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 weep. His, his and- name's Chester. Let's just shake his hand. Takes like his index finger and thumb and just kind of shakes the hand. He says, okay, someone with manners, all right. And he's a little smelly, but oh, it'll work. Hey. <laughs> he can't he's... understand me anyways. Oh, God. All right, I won't tell him you said that. So you make your way out? Yeah. <laughs> you I was like, make oh. your way out into the front area of the shop, and you see Granny making a beeline for the window. It's just like... Over until she kind of pulls one aside slightly. She's just staring up intently. Are you all right, Granny? Shh, shh. She kind of weighs you over. Come take a look. I go and I peek. <sighs> you see that? Taking a look. Go ahead and make a perception check. What do I see, um, Granny? You, you, because of your. Reliable talent, you will succeed this check, but if you roll higher, you might see more Ooh. than you would before. <laughs> this is perception, right? Perception. Okay, so then 20. You go over Granny's shoulder and kind of take a look in the direction that she's looking, and it's not hard to spot. For the normal person, maybe, but for you, who's known when to look for something abnormal in the most normal of settings, looking at the rooftop of an adjacent building, you can see that there is a figure there. And with a 20, all you can really make out is that on their face, there is this decorated porcelain mask that just sort of stares into the shop. And as soon as they kind of see you too, You see them sort of turn, and in this flash, you see them sort of appear further down the buildings as Granny sort of turns to you and says, All right, then you want my training, right? Yeah. How about this? A little test. You bring whoever that is back to me alive. We'll consider that your first test. If you succeed, I'll train you. If you fail, then I suppose you'll have to look elsewhere for your druid master. Oh, I won't fail. I'll bring him. Alive. Alive. (laughs) Okay. Anna looks at you and says, Oh, so are we doing this? If I'll do it alone if you don't want to, but... No, I think we work good together. So let's go. Sounds good. Um, you push out of Blondie's Botany and you see that the streets that are just waking up now, people just starting to get out as above you, you hear the ting, ting, ting of the morning bells. You look on ahead as you see that figure getting further away, still on the rooftops. What's the plan? All right. I mean, we could split up. But up, you want to take I can higher go up. low. You go up. You go down. Sounds good to me. Um, he looks at the small mouse, and the mouse says, "Yeah, I don't want to stick next to this guy." So he kind of runs across out on his shoulders, who kind of goes like, Ugh, and then jumps onto your shoulders. Says, so I'm coming with you. All right. Just once again, just don't, just don't talk too much. Don't mess with my head a little bit. This is, but we can okay. chat. It's all right. I'll keep the coaching to a minimum. Okay. But I know, like I said, I know these streets like the back of my paw. Let's okay. go. All right. I trust you. Let's go. Anna takes off down the center street. Make an acrobatics check to get up to the top of the roof. Oh, 19. 19. Fantastic. You begin to dart across um, the street getting to it looks to be like almost like a fire escape and without even getting onto the steps you just leap on to the edge and just hurl yourself upward acrobatics like from side to side wall jumping until you're on the roof and you can see the figure far ahead um, getting farther how far I'd say that they're like at this point like 90 feet away 90 feet 
They used a spell to get 64 more feet from where they were. Hmm. Can I try to shoot a trap arrow at them? Yeah, absolutely. Okay, yeah, I have one trap arrow, so I really hope this works. Okay. So go ahead and roll your attack. It's a natural one. Natural one. <laughs> you pull your bow out as you're readying yourself, pulling yourself to the top of this building, and you pull and pull the arrow back, the trap arrow, and it triggers as the trap just... Oh my god. Make a strength saving throw. <laughs> As this trap arrow, unfortunately, was uh, the the mechanism on it was a little too hair tight. God damn, I'm fucking trapped. What was it you said? Strength saving throw for this one. As you're trying to make sure you don't get wrapped up in your own thing. You can make it. Mm-hmm. No, no, death strength is what it is. Nine. You get tripped up as you <laughs> load up in your. <laughs> The net explodes oh, around you. God. You don't get fully tied up, but it holds you up for a good amount as Chester's like, what the hell is going on? Okay, I didn't mean for that to happen. I'm going to chew for my life. He is <laughs> chewing you out of the net. You're able to Thanks, bust out. Chester. The person looks to be like now 30 right. more feet ahead, like 120 feet at this point as they're leaping from rooftop to rooftop. Um, you still have uh, your turn. It doesn't look like they fully notice that you're chasing them i can roll for that though okay i'm gonna pick up speed i'm gonna really charge at them you start running as fast as you can i mean talking like action dash cunning action of like leaping across these buildings alongside them and from below you see alana also running pushing through doing like dives through like flower carts and stuff as he's running through the streets you can give him a command if you want to try to do something or can i try to make vines Pop up here in front of him so that he trips. This is a big augment roll, but you certainly can. You're basically going to cast the entangle spell, um, which you don't have, but we can augment for. So go ahead and roll an augment check for me. Your DC is pretty high. It's a good idea, so I might give you advantage on that. Really? Yeah, it's a good idea. <laughs> oh, thank you. And it's very thematic. Fuck me. Ten. Okay. You are trying to will your magic, and it's able to go off with a side effect, which I will decide, <laughs> plus a little wild magic fun. Oh, God. <laughs> if I fall off another building, I'm going to lose my mind. I go ahead and roll 3d100 for me. 25. 25. 86. 86. 53. 53. 164. Rule one more for me. Oh. This is regular D100. Okay, 40. 40. The magic doesn't go as you expect. There is something strange that happens as you're trying to produce vines at a distance in front of you. It's such a far distance. You've closed some of the gap. It doesn't really happen. The vines produce, but they kind of wrap around your arms and legs and your body. <laughs> but not in a binding way. What? They almost feel like an extension of yourself as you find almost like springing (laughs) vines and then these like large tentacles that you have, the vines that you have wrapped around you. You can use them to your extent. Just think like... Oh my God. I can be Monkey D. Luffy and fucking... (laughs) You can Monkey D. Luffy if you want as you are suddenly... I'm going to try to grab him with my vine Go ahead and make an attack roll. Use like your dagger attack for this. Yo. What the? 12. 12. You throw out a vine, and it's this this point that they notice you as they kind of turn around. The vine goes flying towards them to wrap around them. They're able to dodge out of the way and swipe up with a dagger, chopping off part of it, and it just kind of regrows there. Um, Alana is still on the ground. He's getting a little bit further ahead of where that guy's going. What do you want him to do? If you want to yell him out some kind of something towards him. Did you do anything to make him stop running? <laughs> okay, I can try. He just kind of shouts backwards. <laughs> you see Alana pull his staff and twirl it and then just slam it into the ground. There's like a gust of wind that sends him flying upward to block the path in front as he starts running towards the figure, um, giving you advantage as the figure is suddenly like stopped up 
um, and kind of falls uh, uh, kind of on their ass a little bit as seeing the sight of this air genasi just land like right in front of them. You have advantage on whatever you want to do next. Okay, I'll grab him. I'll try to grab him again with the with the vine, unless I'm close enough to him. You're close enough. Yeah, at this point, you're close enough to use the vines. If okay. you didn't have the vines, you'd not at all be okay. able to do okay, this. Okay, okay, okay. Then I'll, I will try to grab him again with the vines. Go for it. 26. Oh, 26. <laughs> yeah, there's no way he's getting out of that. As the vines <laughs> shoot out, as they stumble for just a moment, they twist and turn as vines... <laughs> wrap around the body and they boom, kind of hit the ground um, struggling to try and cut their way out but they are caught for the moment how are you going to keep them caught? Um, I will shoot an arrow in a way that like pins <laughs> <laughs> pins like the vine to him like his leg just his leg or something so it's make, not like he's not dead sure you make like an attack roll um, yeah just an attack roll 15 15, I would say it gets dangerously close, but the arrow through the vine kind of pins it. As he's kind of trying to pull free, you both approach now, and it just kind of twirls and then puts the staff to his throat. Nice. I'll run my way up. As you run up, you see that the vine that you threw out has fully, like, left your body and wrapped around this person. Um... As you approach, what are you doing? As they're on the ground being held down by Anna. I walk up and I'm like, you're really hard to catch. I pride myself on that. You won't mind if I just take off your mask, you know, talk face to face. I'd rather you kid. The mask kind of turned towards you. And from underneath you hear Lazara? Um, and that's where it went. What? What? 